when you were growing up in Baltimore, what did a young Monique want to be? Just what I'm doing right now, baby. You dreamed of this. Just when I tell you, Shannon, from a little girl, I always wanted to be famous. Okay. Because I saw the Jackson 5. Okay. And I saw people screaming for them and hollering. And I'm like, damn it, I want them to scream and holler for me, but I couldn't sing. Right. But I knew somewhere... I was going to be famous. Right. So I prayed to the universe, just let me be famous. I didn't understand what all came with that. Mm -hmm. As a little girl, right. you just see the lights, the glamour, the glitz, and you fall in love with that. So that little girl fell in love with the lights, the glamour, and the, gl the glitz. That little girl fell in love with a woman named Oprah Winfrey oh. on a local talk show in Baltimore mm -hmm. called People Are Talking. And when I looked at that woman, Shannon, I saw me. I saw a big woman with a big head, big shoulders, and big feet. And I said, if that woman can do that, so can I. So that's what that little girl was thinking about from Baltimore. Are you the type of person that if you see someone do something one time, that means it can be done again? Because you saw Oprah do it. You say, well, Oprah doing it. Why can't Monique do it? I think Oprah, when I saw her do it as a little girl, was a push. Mm -hmm. However, had I not seen Oprah, my dreams would have still been my dreams. Okay. But when you see somebody that's inside of that space, because how many big black women are on TV even now? Correct. So back then, you didn't see any big black women on TV that was doing it. So I think had I not seen her, I would have still wanted to do it. But seeing her, let me say, okay, it's possible. It's right there. When I listen to your story, mm -hmm. you say dirt poor. Yes. Bathroom outside. Yes. It was, we had to make it work however we can make it work. Correct. And then you get that first big check. Yes. And you think the people that gave it to you was awesome mm -hmm. because they gave it to you. And it's more money than you've ever seen before until you find out this ain't the right money. This ain't the right amount. Wait a minute. If they got this, why am I getting this? Then you start putting the pieces together and you start saying it's not right and I'm going to speak about it. See, when I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken mm -hmm. on those platforms, it was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn come. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister, broken, sitting on those platforms. Now, when I said it, when I said it. Why did they get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming, and I and I don't have a problem. I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago, and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago, why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? You're very specific. These are our heroes. How could you say their names out loud? Because they're the ones that did it. And if I don't say it out loud, now you see a woman that is swallowing that pain, that is so stressed out. Then you see our sister Taraji P. Henson sit on that platform. And I love that baby because she's a beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. But to see her that broken, what our community was saying was we have a hard time, some of us, we have a hard time seeing a strong black woman with a back straight and a chin up and a strong black man standing by her side. We have a hard time accepting that, but we can accept 
seeing a black woman broken. Now it's really serious because she's falling apart. Our community had a hard time with those two things. And when I would hear people say, why is her husband there? Why is he there? It's a sad day when we're questioning why a black man would stand with his black woman. So when you hear black women saying we're the most undervalued, disrespected, underserved, mistreated, violated, exploited, we get all of that. Then you see a black man standing with his black woman saying, not on my watch. And you hear some black men saying, why, why her husband got to be there? We're in a sad state of affairs when we begin to question black love and black unity. So they didn't want to hear me, some of them, because of what I look like, because I spoke about their heroes, and because they saw that man standing right there strong. Did they question the validity? The because we had never seen this before, not so not so public, not so present. Yes. Did they question you and his relationship? Me and my husband? Yes. When you say question, what well, is like? Because they did, but I want to understand what because, you Because, okay, did they think that was your husband or what was he, your manager? Because he's been everything. Yes. He's your lover. He's your manager. Name he's your him. confidant. Name him. He's, he's your, he's the, the father. He's, Come on, name him. Whatever it is, uh, he's all encompassing. Yes. He's a toolbox with all the tools that Monique needs. All of them. And so when I, I heard people saying that, why is he there? Why does he have to be in every interview? Why does he have to be in the background? Why can't Monique do that? Why not? Why not? Why not? And that when you see, and these are my sisters, but when you see Taraji, when you see Viola, when you see our sisters speaking out, you never see their representation sitting right there with them. Mm -hmm. You never see them saying, listen, we got to fight together. Right. My husband is also my manager, which is my representation. Right. But again, we've been so beat down that some of us have a problem with this black man saying, I'm standing right here strong right. and I will not flinch and I will not budge. What a sad state of affairs we are now in where you have people that look like you and I mm -hmm. that would question why this man is standing there. That for the life of me. It's disheartening. Mm -hmm. When we heard Brother Malcolm say, we've been run amok, we've been hoodwinked, we're now doing it to ourselves. We're now doing it to ourselves. So when you say, Monique, it was different because we had never seen that before. You said their names. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. I'm not the first one. Right. I'm not the first one, but we get washed away in history so easily that we start thinking, oh, this is the first one. This is the first one. Her name is Claudette Colvin. And she's not the first one, but she was before Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. But because Claudette Colvin did not fit the picture that they thought she should look like, she was dark skinned and she had coarse hair. And because the, the organization, I believe it was the NAACP, mm -hmm. did not think she would be accepted by the white people. Mm -hmm. They had to get somebody that they said the white people could accept. We keep repeating the same thing because what I said is no different than what anyone else is saying. Not, not at all. Right. It was the messenger. And it was the way that I'm not putting my head down. I'm not shedding one tear. I'm not going to say, I don't want to say their name because I might get in trouble. I'm going to say all of it. Right. Because when you really think about that little girl coming behind you, what I don't ever want that baby to see is me broken. I don't want her to see me falling apart. And I understand it. I understand how it can happen, Shannon, when you may not have a foundation at home, right. when you may not have that man at home or that woman at home, whomever, that support person saying you're not crazy. Right. I got you. Come on. We're going to go through this. We're going to get through this. So for us, if we start taking things for what they are and get out of our emotions, we would be so far along. Do you believe punishment? Mm. Punishment is not only meant for the perpetrator, but it's also to deter others 
from said acts. You see it. Do you believe the punishment that was bestowed upon Monique was not only to punish you, you saw it. but to deter others from saying what you said? Well, Shannon, see, here, and, and, and I'm going to answer that. But sometimes we act like we don't know our history. See, back in the day when they had us in chains, mm -hmm. they would beat one real good. Right. But they in front of every, the others. In front of the others. And they let everybody know what you don't want is that type of ass whooping. Right. So what they said was, we're going to beat Monique really good. We're going to sit her down. And, and, and I made it public. Financially, my family took a hit, Shannon. And when I tell you we took a hit. Right. We took a hit. So when you see our sister go through that, you see her go through and... We act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen... We got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that allows Lady O to keep on doing what she's doing. And we're in a position of, I don't want to say nothing because we saw how Monique got whooped. Now, again, that's just my humble right. opinion. But I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to frame that. It's like, listen, you better fix that because you saw what they did to her. You saw how they treated her. Is it a situation, do you believe it's a situation that Oprah might have faced something similar that maybe wasn't as public as you? And, and, and she's looking at it, well, if I faced that, went through it and came out on the other side and look at me, it should be okay. Because sometimes we get that with parents. You know, I struggle. You say my kids should have to struggle sometimes also. Do you think that might be something going on with her? Or you just like, she, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Okay. There's a disconnect and there's been a disconnect for years. There's a disconnect. And I think what happens is we place people on these pedestals mm -hmm. and we say, oh no, you can't do no wrong. We don't even want to hear it. Right. And when you hear Kat say, you know what they do? They don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep talking until you take accountability. Right. Until you say, uncle, I've done this. That's why it was so important. From Oprah Winfrey to Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. Now, Lee Daniels was the only one I had to deal with. Did you see Lee Daniels apologize? Mm -hmm. He walked out on he that stage. stage. Not only did he apologize on stage, that man apologized to our children. That man apologized to our children and said, I need to apologize for what I put y'all through. He's the only one I had to deal with. However, it became a problem with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry that I wouldn't do something and work for free. Now, when you say, well, maybe Oprah feels like she came through it. Why can't you? Right. Well, there's a story with Oprah Winfrey when she was on the show. People are talking. Richard Sher was making $55,000. She was making $22,000. These are her words. It was her co-host. She said, I had to leave because they wasn't paying me fairly. Now you say black woman who did nothing wrong and you're in the midst of this situation because she called me, Tyler Perry called me, Lionsgate called. When you were on the phone with my husband, you said, I agree with Monique. I agree with the position she's taking. But? But when it came time to say it out loud, Oprah Winfrey went totally silent. Now, to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right now, here's where. When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. 
because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm-hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his words. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Monique, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. No, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm-hmm. where we live. Right. Enjoy. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's unlegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna, is he gonna make a, he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. Mm-hmm. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation? for what transpired between you and Monique. You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I'll sit right next to him. See, with this whole situation and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, mm-hmm. civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong and you're like my daughter and we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. Okay. Then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. Okay. Who is, she don't play. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. And you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say, Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. I look in the goddamn camera. <laughs> I thought you I thought that was a stage the way you. Look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying. So I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yes. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother. You're like my aunt. You're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. 
when we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my money. husband. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. And we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Correct. right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart name on it, you already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave your check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin's manager, David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling them up, getting in between our relationship after something? You said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother. You said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yep. her and then and she had recorded it. Mm -hmm. That's you on tape. So how does it go from you saying you're going to give me an apology to now I owe you an apology? But what do you owe an apology for? What 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 could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniels says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, baby. Right. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry. No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No, no. But I thought there was an apology. I, I read what there uh, that I thought I read somewhere that Oprah had issued you an apology and Tyler had issued an apology. That's not correct. No, no. The only person that's given you an apology. You saw it. It's Lee Daniels. That's the only person. So we are in a place where we're too afraid to call them for what it is. We're too afraid to say if it looked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. Right. So, again, you see the struggle of the black woman as I'm sitting here talking to you. And you say, Mo, but why would you record him? But you heard the man violate me. The first thing wasn't, I can't believe that cat did that to you. It's, why would you do it? And we understand it. Right. Because we've been conditioned that way. Because when you... You had to get somehow because when you're telling people these are lies, yes. nobody is believing Monique. So now, even though you have him record his voice and that's him and 
He's saying he made it up. Now it's no longer, oh man, I can't believe he lied on Mo. Mo, why'd you record it? So now they put the onus back on you. Where's the win? How do we win? How does a black woman win when you say, here he is right here? And I look to the community and say, how long do we allow us to keep being exploited, used up, taken advantage of, and because we think somebody can give us an opportunity, mm -hmm. we just say, shh, I'm not going to say nothing. If we keep operating like that, Shannon, you're going to have a whole lot of us sitting right here in this same seat, almost telling the same story. Why do you think Tyler is afraid to meet with you and your husband? Why does it need to be you one on one when he meet with other representatives and 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 the cli their client? Why, what is it about you that he feels it needs to be just you and he? Does he think your husband is some kind of negative influence on you? He thinks the husband is saying things that that Monique probably wouldn't say if I just had, had an opportunity to talk to her one on one. What do you think that is? Let me say <coughs> this. Excuse me. People better be glad my husband is by my side because there are people in Hollywood that know wherever you act up is where I show up. People know in Hollywood, <laughs> baby, Shannon, and I don't say it with a badge of honor. It's just what it is. Well, I've had to say, who you think you're talking to? And we're sitting there with the president of the studio or the com My patience level is not going to allow. I've been molested. I've been violated. So the moment I see you trying to do it, we're going to have to address it. My husband is nothing but a gentleman. And you know why people have a problem with my husband? Because he's right to it. There's no, we're going to dance around the bush. He's right to it. Right. And people like Tyler Perry, people like Oprah Winfrey, they look at my husband and say, how dare you be so direct? Right. How dare you not put your eyes down when you're talking to me? How dare you do that? My husband is also my manager. Why would he want to exclude my right. management? It's like, Tyler, you should want my husband to be there. You, right. you, you may want him to be sitting right there so that way we can have a conversation that everyone can be heard. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you, Shannon, because most people are too afraid. That's heard the tape. They're too afraid to say, no, I heard it, and this is what he said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate T.S. Madison. Because T.S. Madison was the first one to say, no, I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. So when folks were trying to jump on her, she not down for the black woman. Listen, baby, y'all don't even understand the right. fights that sister be having when ain't nobody watching for the black woman. Right. So I appreciate you looking in that camera. Right. Well, I mean, look, sometimes there are some some black people, some, not all, some, that... My grandfather used to say, Mo, is that if you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you despise the most in a person. Now, what do we despise most about Trump supporters, ex-President Trump, is that no matter what he says, no matter what he does, they give him an out. There's some people in our community, no matter what powerful black people say or do in our community, we'll give them an out. And we can't. And we become the very thing we despise the yes. most. What we despise most about President Trump's, ex-President Trump supporters is that no matter what he does or says, it's okay. Yes. We can't do that. We you can't. can't. We can't. If somebody is wrong, like you said, Mo, if somebody is wrong, we have to be man or woman enough to say they're wrong regardless of what comes along with that. They don't know. They don't understand what them saying I'm sorry will mean for them. See, when I, I read the Because other that's day, not for you. And I'm sorry, it's not for the person that you offended. It's for you because currently you're in hostage, your feelings, because you have to live with that. You have to live with that. What you've done. So when you see a woman say, me turning 70, I'm so happy because I've never hurt anyone. Stop it. Stop it. Because there's a black woman that has been calling your name for over a decade that you seem to want to make go away. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you want, would you sit, if Oprah called Mo today, would you sit down and have a conversation with her? Let me tell you what I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is, I'm going to say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds, Within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. 
What you trying to tell me about this system? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. See, when I speak about Oprah Winfrey, and let me be clear, I love that sister because she's our sister. Mm -hmm. She just got to come back across the street. We got the light on. When I speak about Oprah Winfrey, I speak about that woman because she's spoken about me. And when you begin to speak about me privately, I'm going to speak about you publicly. You've been unfair. You've been unjust. And you watched a black woman be thrown under the bus and you said nothing. And here's what's interesting as well. My husband was saying to me, after I won the Oscar award, right? Mm -hmm. And she had the people come, you know, to talk to the Oscar winners. And I go on the stage and I talk to the Oscar winners. Well, when we go to a commercial, the people in the audience, and I say this humbly as my husband was telling me, he said, mama, they wasn't screaming Oprah. They were screaming Monique, mm -hmm. right? right? So much so, I had to say, y'all gonna shut that shit up now. We get ready to go back on the air. We right. having fun, right. right? He said, but I watched Oprah. He said, and I watched her almost turning her seat like they screaming her name. Now, some people will say, oh, Monique, you're, you're reaching. Well, let me tell you what then happens. The movie The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Lee Daniels came out and said, I did offer Monique the butler. But as he said to me, he said, Mo, at the time I didn't have no power and I didn't have no money. So when Oprah said she wanted it, so who played the lead role in the butler? Oprah Winfrey. Lee Daniels was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor and he offered me the grandmother. Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. So as you're looking at me, it's the same way I'm looking at that sister. And I'm saying, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Because the way things could look, it may not be that way, but just the way things look, Oprah. Just the way you would have my family on your show, Oprah. One might say, Mo, well, I mean, if the role if they're looking for a black... Um, big, go ahead and big. say it. Shannon, it's okay for what his words. He wants to say not, fat black woman. Not, if because, the role looking for a fat black woman, Mo, but he was nah, like, nah, you but know. But I want to uh, keep my podcast, Mo. Uh, Y'all ain't been to cancel This is why we love you, Uncle Shay Shay, because we want you to say it, a fat black woman. Now, me and Oprah fit the damn description, <laughs> Shay. Fat black. Don't we fit it? You, you do. But I'll be right back here to be, I'll be your neighbor up there where you live at. Listen here. Live. Listen here. <laughs> listen here. So, <laughs> so, are you lying? No. Now, I'm no. not going to have your big ass sitting here in the <laughs> Hall of Fame and you scared to say shit. Okay. And I want to uh, excuse myself for any of the babies that might be watching this because I wasn't going to say no spicy things. But Shay Shay get me wrong now. Come on, uh, Shay. One might say, mm -hmm. or people might say, well, Mo, I mean, the role calls for a, a heavyset black woman. You, Oprah, y'all fit the roles. Yes. How do we know that she wasn't offered the role at long and, and people think that she's better, more, more qualified than you? It don't work like that, Shannon. You can't offer me. Once you say, I want you. Right. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I don't have the money <coughs> to fund a production. Right. I don't have the connections to go to the studio and say, listen, I want to do this movie. She does. Right. So when Lee says, hey, baby, she got the money. Go get it. get it. But someone would just say, how is that working out like that? How is that happening like that? Mm -hmm. How is it that things that was offered to Monique, you seem to be playing? Now, I, I told Oprah about that. See, everything we're saying to you right now. You ha he was having a conversation with her. Listen here. I don't play the behind the back. I don't play the I'm going to share with Shan. There's one thing I will share with you that I've not shared with anybody. Okay. But I don't play the behind the back and all of that. I say, listen, let me try to get to you first. Now, if you avoid me. Okay. okay, but I tried to be respectful. I tried to call you first when she had my family on her show. I tried to call you first. I tried to talk to you privately, but then you became the great, the great mighty Oprah Winfrey and you were too busy to talk. Well, now I'm going to talk about it. This woman has overstepped with me so in so many ways that somebody would say, if we wasn't Monique and Oprah Winfrey in the entertainment business, 
and we was Monique and Oprah Winfrey that worked at Costco. <laughs> I see you in the break room. <laughs> I see you at your cash register. Because she's overstepped. Wow. So, I don't know, Monique, this might be the, the term crossing of the Rubicon. We might be going too far. Can I don't, how do you, if you feel that way, because clearly if you feel this way, now yes. I, I get why you feel this way. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know this. I don't, I, I'm taking you at your word. Now, not, 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 not the Tyler, because yes. I, I've listened to the audio. Yes. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about Oprah. Yes. I'm just taking you at your word. Yes. If you feel this way, is it possible she feels the exact same way about you? How could she? How could she? What have I taken from Oprah? When did I have Oprah's mother and father on my show? Mm -hmm. When did I have anybody come and speak about Oprah Winfrey on the Monique show? That's never happened. So how could she feel that way? Would you have done that? Had her family on? Yeah. Let me tell you how we operate. When we had the Monique show, there was a comedian on there. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to joke T.I.'s wife, Tiny. My husband walked out in the middle of his set. He said, cut. He said, brother, we don't do that here. We uplift our folks. Mm -hmm. We don't play that. So no, I would not have done that. When Oprah Winfrey had my family, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell y'all, and I'm looking, over, I'm looking around, baby, because there are people here. Yes. Okay, and I don't yeah. want to be rude to the people at Shay Shay's club. You got other people in the club, mm -hmm. right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up and she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar Award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. And he wants to tell other people how to look out for a predator. Right. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like she didn't have to call me. She didn't. She didn't have to call me and say, right. I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father. And my other brother, who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about them? Mm -hmm. Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show and they're talking about somebody that violated you and that woman didn't tell you that they were going to be there, how would you feel? I would feel like you feel like you felt betrayed. That is exactly how I felt and how I feel. And it's not, oh, I'm in a, no, I understand it. But you betrayed me, sister. And I'm not the only one. Because at the time when she called you, she said it was just your brother. Just my brother. And when my mother was on that show, do you know what I had to deal with, Shannon? What's that? I would be in the store. And I would have elderly women coming up to me. And they would say, your mama ain't shit. Wow. Now, they wasn't lying, Shannon, okay? <laughs> they wasn't lying, baby. Sometimes you got to let the truth be the goddamn truth. Sometimes you got to just go with it. But still, it's my mother. It's your mom. And I'm in here and I, because when she went... I'm having to defend something. And I got that often with them telling me what my mother wasn't because you did not tell me. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mama, I'd have said, shut that it's shit crazy. down. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see. Shut it down. Now, there's a white woman named Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. They called her first. And she said, Monique, I told your family, I can't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you. Mm -hmm. You just won that award. Like, yeah. why would I do that? Yeah, this, I mean, you're here. Why would I bring something that I know that you don't want to talk about? You lived it. Why do I need to replay it again? Ask her. Your camera right there. I, but I, I, was, I was trying to get I know, baby, but, but, 
<laughs> ask her. See, this is where it get juicy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're saying the right things, yes. but you're asking me questions that I can't answer. Right. I can't answer why Oprah Winfrey did what Oprah Winfrey did. Yeah. Only Oprah Winfrey can answer for her actions. Yes. So again, stop being scared. No, I would not. I knew that would get him on Mary. I knew that would pop him back in, baby. I knew that would get up a Shay Shay. But even even this show, I have a producer and I give him a lot of leeway. But I've had people reach out and say, well, a family member said something and I want to come on your show and refute it. That ain't what we do here. Right. It's like it ain't gonna happen. It's almost you don't cross that barrier. Mm -mm. We don't don't do we don't do the family thing. You don't do the family thing. And and I will say this right now on your show. I still love y'all. We still love y'all. You love more, they make it make it right. My husband, okay, say that again because you I, love y'all more, y'all make it right. Yes, indeed. Okay, I fix him a pound cake. <laughs> my, my husband would always say, "Mama, we ain't calling nobody out. We calling them up. And if we continue to call us up on our doings that are not right, we get better as a people." Like, we get better. Do you know why things were able to happen like they happened on The Color Purple? Why you hate Oh, you talking about the rebate? You talking about... I'm talking about the seventh one. The one that just came out. Right. Right, and that the seventh edition? (coughs) It's like the musical with Fantasia and and, and Taraji, right? Right, 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 right. right. That, That one with all our beautiful sisters. Yes. You know why they're able to treat us like they treat us? How are you handpicked and you audition? No, if you handpick, you don't audition. I want you to say that again, Shannon, because people don't understand how deep this goes. When I watch my sister say it was an honor to be handpicked. Right. Then why ever would you audition? Yeah. And the moment, in my opinion, the moment she auditioned, they knew we got them. We can treat them any kind of way we want to treat them. We can do them any kind of way. But why would you want to? Why? Just because you can, that doesn't mean you should. But they did. But they did. How do you handpick me and then mistreat me? Yes. And then I got to send a letter to you about the mistreatment that you gave me. That's why they're able to get away with it. That's why when I do interviews, oftentimes, or these conversations, people are too afraid to even address it because they don't want to be caught up like, oh, I don't I don't know. I, I, I. When you say, wait a minute, no, that's the truth. Right. I heard it. And I don't want my character to be on the line as I'm being a person sitting there asking people about their lives right. and then not be able to stand in what I've heard. Right. That's why it made so much, of, uh, it was important for us. It was important for us to get you that audio. I don't want you to take my word. Yeah. And anything I've said on this couch right now, that don't take my word. Ask those people. Ask those people. Right. And see what happens. And then maybe after this come out, they, they're going to label me again. She's bitter. She's not loved. Yeah, yeah. You done stole, you done got 30, 40 million of my dollars. Yeah, I'm bitter. She, she, Most, the average t- person going to be bitter. Okay, I just want to look on your camera. Okay. And, and here's the thing. Because I got a king at home, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. You just want what's right. We just determined. Right. Not life is too good to be bitter, but we're determined for you to take accountability. Right. That's all. What Sidney Poitier say? It's not how many times you say yes. Mm -hmm. It's how many times you say no. And the moment our baby auditioned, they got set up for no trailers. They got set up for no food. They got set up for no drivers. Because now in their mind, they think you're desperate. Right. So when Oprah does the one-on-one with Taraji and she begins to run down her credits, the great Taraji P. Henson, then why ever would you allow the audition to happen? Why ever would you allow that? Why wouldn't you to- go to that studio and say, She doesn't have to. Do. She doesn't have to. I handpicked them. So either our sister's not as powerful as we believe she right. is, or either there's not the concern that she tries to make it look like it is. Okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. I want y'all to take your time, because I'm getting ready to go Yeah, you, that's your camera right now. Yeah, because the people at home, they sitting there like, Moni, what happened? Bitch, I'm getting ready to <laughs> She calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? 
You've got to draw the line. And you're saying when you know they're asking you for too much, she said, you're absolutely right. And I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. So when you're looking at me saying, well, what happened? I'm telling you what happened. But, okay, she's saying that privately, but did she voice that publicly? Did you hear her say it? I did. Did you hear her say it? JT, did you hear her say it? No. Zach, did you hear her say it, Zach? Regina, did you hear her? Tommy, no one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone in that when she was talking to him. Mm -hmm. In that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, mm -hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies that's good with the little internet, we had a, a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Finding a way to be unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he lo I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know it's not right. Now, that man shared that on that show. So I'm not saying nothing that hasn't been shared. So you have people that will say things in private, but won't do it publicly. I'm the person that I will say it in private and I'm going to say it publicly because that's the only way we make it right. But you don't need somebody to talk good to your face. You need somebody to talk good behind your back. So if you telling me, if you telling me what a great person I am in my face, but you telling me I'm dog poop behind my back, what good is that, Mo? What does that make those kind of people, Shannon? That's... What does it make those that's kind of people? That's cowardly. That is cowardly. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the, Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. Yes. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen... What are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. Invite them. I have. They not going to do it. Well, look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He do him again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all, come on. Stop playing. They ain't coming on, more. Thanks to you. You know how... And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it because <coughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend mm -hmm. and someone says to me, Monique, Shannon Sharp wronged me. And you my friend? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to call my friend. You can come to me. And I'm going to say, hey, is what they saying true? And if you get to him and Han, I'm going to tell you, till you fix it, you and I can't talk. Because if you'll do them that way, you do them. it'll be a matter of time before you do it to me. So if Steve Harvey is your friend, mm -hmm. you call your friend up and you ask him, is what our sister saying right, man? Because if it is, we can't do that to her if that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Jamaica Carter and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. When I tell T.S. Madison when the camera cuts, I said, listen, your friend is wrong. She said, Monique Lee Daniels is my friend. I said, then you need to call your friend and tell him to fix this shit. She said, I will. Within a couple of days, who did I get a call from? Lee, Lee Daniels. See, that's a friend. Mm -hmm. That's a true friend that's saying, I love you so much that I want to make sure that's not on your heart or your conscience. Let's fix it. Let's make it right. So when people ask Lee now, when we did the deliverance together, how was it to work with Monique? It was as if we had never parted ways because he fixed it. 
He owned it and he took accountability for it. I can't now keep you to the cross because you've owned it. Right. I've had to be forgiven. Right. So I appreciate mm-hmm. the, that someone had grace and mercy with me. So I'm going to have that with other people when they take accountability for what they've done. I read that you said you read you, this is a chapter of forgiveness. That's your thing. A chapter of forgiveness. I didn't say that. That's what the guy at Hollywood Reporter said. <laughs> Okay, don't put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. That's what his ass said. Okay, what did you say? Okay, okay. That's what he said. Listen. What would it take, Mo? Mo, what would it take for Mo Neat to forgive Oprah and Tyler Perry? Be accountable. Be accountable. And for you Tyler want Perry, Tyler Perry to say what he said on that tape. You want him to say that publicly. And he cost my family millions. And you want so to be we, compensated. Yes. I want to be very clear about that. If someone costs you millions, do you want that back? Absolutely. So I'm no different than you. Right. Especially when I've done nothing wrong. Right. Especially when you've admitted that you've lied. Okay. Especially when you've admitted that you started a rumor. Yes. You need to compensate me and my family. For Oprah. For Oprah Winfrey, you owe me an apology. See, Shannon, Oprah and I had a private conversation about our mothers. Mm-hmm. This is the part people don't know. Right. I shared with that woman what me and my mother were going through. Now, my mother's no longer here. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. And I shared with Oprah Winfrey what we were going through and how I felt. And I was, you know, you, you trying to balance it out because it's your mother. Can feel and your I mom. shared Come that with you. And I shared with her my family and what the dynamic was. And you don't tell me you're going to have my God. Darren parents. I was getting ready to say, God damn, baby, it was right there. But you don't tell me you can already have my mother and my father on your show. And you think that that's just okay. And the way you try to apologize in front of a group of women, if you think I've done anything wrong, no, 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 no. you're going to stop that. Right. I am very proud of what you've accomplished in your life. Mm-hmm. We respect everybody, right. but we over respect no one. And Oprah Winfrey walks around like, I can't be checked. I, no, I won't admit to I, that I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm a firm believer, Mo. No one is beyond reproach. No one at all. So when you keep saying, what is it? I'm going to keep answering you the same exact way. Right. So if you talk to your camera, I'm going to talk to my camera and see how they split the screen. And we're going to invite them at the same time. You talk to them first. Okay. Uh, Tyler, Oprah, I would greatly appreciate it if you two guys would come on Club Shay Shay. We sit down, we have a conversation. This is not an interview. This is not hard hitting. I want you to tell your truth, Miss Oprah, uh, Tyler, tell your truth, and we can get to the bottom of this because, hey, we got an icon here sitting on this couch and she's hurting. Oprah and Tyler, I want to say I appreciate my brother Shannon Shaw for saying what he just said. And I want to clear something up. I'm not hurt personally. I'm hurt for our community. I'm hurt that y'all would allow yourselves to sit in something that you know that you've done wrong and not say anything. That helps us not. So Brother Shay Shay have said, y'all come on on the sofa. Oprah, this liquor is good. Okay, and I understand you like cranberry and vodka. Okay, Roosevelt Cartwright told me, you drink that you like. And you know, he told me some other things with the drink that you like. Come on, on Uncle Shay Shay. Let's have a conversation. And not, well, you took yours all the way down and I cannot. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I cannot. I cannot do that. You, you, you already did a good, you did a good Thank job. Thank you, sugar. Appreciate now, that. when we get ready to wrap up, I'm going to give you an exclusive on something that don't nobody know. Ooh. Okay? Don't nobody know this. And I, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. It's going to be something. Now, I'm a boss. I'm independent and I'm empowered. Don't you know I run this? See, I, too, went to the Oprah Winfrey University of Empowerment. And you don't need a man to make it. Right. I signed up. Right. And I was at the top of the class till I realized I was going to bed empty. Mm-hmm. I was going to bed with nothing but stuff. I did not want to be the poor little rich girl who have everything but nothing at all. Don't that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. I did not want to be that, Shannon. So even for the men, even for the men that I was with, right? You were with them. I wasn't? No. Okay, talk to me, Shannon. Let that liquor use you. That was I just wasn't a, with them. That was just a body for the lonely. <laughs> liquor makes shit sound good, won't it? <laughs> liquor will make you not sound like a whore. It was just a body for the lonely. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.